I just got back from a four-day trip in the mountains of Wyoming. Uh, this took place in October when the weather can be pretty chilly. I went with a friend, her name is Karis, and I have to say this was her very first time ever camping. And we went out fully ultralight. That means we had less than 10 pounds of base weight, each of us, on our backs. And, uh, and base weight by definition means everything that is not a consumable, that means food and water, the weight of the food and water was subtracted from our backpacks. Uh, the result of our efforts, uh, trimming down the ounces off our backs, was a spectacular trip during one of the most beautiful times of the year. Um, the, uh, this pack on my back here, which I'll take off, is, I don't know what it weighs, it doesn't weigh much. It looks kind of big and plump. The only reason it looks big and plump is because I've got, um, a down sleeping bag in there and a down coat and some puffy pants and I didn't bother compressing them. So it looks big but it's just the volume of the puffiness takes up the size of the pack. I don't know what it weighs, definitely under 15. Um, I've done both traditional backpacking. That's the big boots, the big pack, the gaiters, the tent that zips up, uh, and I've done lightweight backpacking. Uh, lightweight backpacking for the most part is summer only. We're right on the shoulder season. We added a little more shoulder season, meaning it's October instead of the middle of summer. We have a beautiful day now, but nights have been cold. And the uh, and I, I am speaking with absolute conviction now. I am not going to mince words. Your ability to appreciate the wilderness is significantly increased by the lightness of the pack. When you subtract weight from your back, and I'll also say subtract weight from your feet because I'm just using little running shoes here. There's nothing fancy here. I got these cutie little marathon runner socks. Uh, when you reduce weight from your pack and your feet and everything, uh, you are increasing your ability to appreciate the wilderness. And uh, I, we are out here, we are not in any way attempting to conquer the wilderness. We are hiking slow. We are talking the whole time. If I had been on the same trail. This is a kind of crappy old trail. I don't know if this is a real person trail. It might be an old moose trail or something. Um, if if we had been walking on this trail with a great big porky traditional backpack, potentially weighing up to, I mean, easily 50, 60 pounds. People come out here with with gear th that they that there's a perception that they need it. Um, I've got close to uh, whatever a quarter of that. I don't know. I'm not going to do the math here because, but. Uh, and what happens is, Karis and I are both walking upright, we're both talking, we're looking around, we're not, um, we're not burdened by the weight of the pack. Uh, our decision-making process, if we go right and left on the trail, uh, yesterday we took a long loop. It added, I don't know, like two and a half miles to our day, just to walk around some pretty lakes. Uh, and I will also say at the end of the day, I don't feel crushed at the end of the day. Uh, the traditional backpack, you get, you have an X in the map, you trudge to that X in the map, you drop your big pack. It can be very lovely, it can be very rewarding to get to that X in the map and set up a shelter and maybe spend a day or two in a, in a spot. Uh, that's not what we're doing. We are just moving forward, making forward progression. When the sun goes down, we camp wherever we're at. And, uh, and, and I find it is a much more liberating, organic, fulfilling way to travel in the mountains. Um, and, and it has changed my, it has changed me. I used to be totally into mountaineering with the ropes and helmets and crampons and all kinds of climbing gear. And, uh, and, uh, but this, this I find every bit as satisfying as, uh, as the, the more physically challenging issues. I mean, we can still hike a long day and then we'll be tired at the end of the day, but it's not the crushing kind of tired that you feel at the end of a traditional day. And you said that when people go to um, ultralight camping from traditional backpacking, do they ever go back? No, they never go back. <laughs> uh, what happens is, yeah, you, once, you, once you do it once, I've, talk, I've taught this to a bunch of people, including a lot of people who do uh, a significant, who have done, like, who've worked in outdoor programs and done uh, traditional backpacking for decades. And um, they, I'll take them out on a little trip like this, or they'll, they'll do it on their own. And, um, and then basically the bell rings in their head and they're like, oh, this is it. 
this is the future. This is, and and I ask them, so when did the bell ring? When did you have your epiphany? And they're like, five minutes down the trail, <laughs> you know, right when I walked out. It's like it made absolutely made total sense. Uh, you know, hiking with light shoes, uh, and then uh, just keeping. There's a difference between wants and needs. There's gear you need, right? When you're coming out here, you need a sleeping bag when it's this cold at night. You need some way to stay out of the rain. You need you know, to have a hot meal, uh, all of those things can be accomplished with significantly less weight than, uh, than, the, than the perception is, the pop culture perception, the traditional perception of what should be carried into the mountains. Awesome. Thank you. Sure.